just when you thought you could turn your back and walk away. The dark cloud of human indignity follows you. You have no choice but to turn and look it in the eye. It's the sex offender hit list. Let's head over to Addison, Illinois, where a man convicted of having child sexual abuse material is facing the same charges again. How many times do I got to say it? No cure. Once a chomo, always a chomo. And this is 75-year-old Randall Peters, the chomo. He was charged Friday with nine felony counts of possession of child sexual abuse material depicting a person 13 or younger. The prior conviction, according to DuPage County uh, court records. In addition, he was charged with felony failure to register as a sex offender. As police allege, he failed to tell them about an email address that he had. And of course, you know what they found on that email address? Child sexual abuse material. On Saturday, Judge Michael Wright, he denied pretrial release for Peters. That means uh, no bond. According to a prosecutor's petition to detain Peters, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children notified police in February of that email address uh, that was allegedly, so far, used to receive child sexual abuse material. Addison police searched Peters' electronic devices in March. They say they found hundreds of items, according to the uh, petition. When asked about the email address, Peters told police he didn't give it to them because he didn't want the police in his business. Wow. In 2017, Peters had pleaded guilty to felony possession of child sexual abuse material as well as misdemeanor obscenity. And he was sentenced to six months in jail and only given four years of sex offender probation. That's just insane. No wonder he's doing it again. They let him out. A Mountain Home man has been arrested for sexual indecency with a child. Mountain Home police arrested 41-year-old Andrew Dwayne Britt Thursday night. According to the probable cause affidavit, Britt admitted to inappropriately touching an underage female several times as well as exposing himself to her. Britt's facing three felony counts of sexual indecency with a child and he's being held in the Baxter County Detention Center under a $25,000 bond. Meanwhile in Florida, a Milton man was arrested Wednesday on drug and possession of child sexual abuse material charges. This is 27 year old Seth John Foss. He was arrested and charged with probation violation, possession of obscene material, failure to appear and resisting officers. In December of last year, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children reached out to the uh, police regarding child sexual abuse material, the uh, report said. That arrest report said videos of girls between the ages of 3 years old and 11 years old performing sexual acts were downloaded on the app Kick. Deputies got the IP address for the person now identified as Foss and led them to his AT&T account, according to his arrest report. And on January 31st, a search warrant was conducted on his house, and Foss was arrested. He's also accused of sharing videos of him and the woman performing sexual acts over the app. And on April 3rd, Foss was arrested on three felony warrants, according to the arrest report, including felony possession of marijuana over 20 grams, possession of cocaine, possession of drug paraphernalia, felony violation of probation, possession of a controlled substance, other five counts of possession of child sexual abuse material. When deputies went to arrest Foss, they noticed a person running from the house. Well, they got him, and uh, thanks, that was thanks to a canine who tracked Foss through the woods and of course bit him up and then he was arrested. Uh, Foss reportedly was treated at a local hospital for the canine-related injuries. 
then was taken to the Santa Rosa County Jail where he belongs. A coordinated team effort by multiple agencies yesterday resulted in a search warrant as well as the arrest of a 60-year-old Ronald W. Powell Jr. residing in Belton, Missouri. Powell was charged with four counts of possession of child sexual abuse materials and he's being held with no bond. More charges are anticipated as this investigation continues. The investigation started on March 20th this year when a domestic violence uh, sexual assault investigator was contacted by the Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force regarding a National Center for Missing Exploited Children tip involving a subject residing there in Belton. The cyber tip was based on apparent child sexual abuse material and the subject listed was none other than this chomo, Mr. Powell. Evidence indicated multiple screenshots of child sexual abuse material images on the defendant's personal devices. And uh, these images were downloaded to the defendant's devices from the internet. Back down to Florida for this one. And yep, it's another undercover sting for this chomo here. Oh wait, he's a cop! Oh yeah. Well, we're gonna go to Tallahassee this time. Former Leon County deputy, who was arrested and fired in 2022 for soliciting a minor, is now facing charges in a second new case. The new charges were filed against Jared Eldridge on April 2nd, stemming from an incident that took place earlier this year. How did he get off with just two years, or a year if it's earlier this year, on his first charge, soliciting a minor? I don't get it. Um, this time, Eldridge is accused of using an electronic device to solicit a child or another person believed to be a child to engage in unlawful sexual conduct. The incident is alleged to have happened on uh, February 15th. Eldridge faces other accounts for soliciting a child via a parent for unlawful sexual conduct and use of a two-way communication device to facilitate a felony. Um, let's go back to the first one. Back in December of 22, Eldridge was allegedly caught by his co-worker, who was an undercover detective posing as a 14-year-old named Jenny. These two exchanged dozens of messages, and Eldridge sent a photo of himself. The detective reportedly was able to identify him as a fellow employee at that time. Eldridge was released on bond the same day, and he was arrested for the 2022 case and awaiting trial before the February incident. Okay, I see how. They just let him out on bond. He was never uh, brought up for sentencing yet. Anyways, the case management hearing is set for the new charges on May 7th here. Uh, that was yesterday. I guess this came out over the weekend. Eldridge is being held without bond at a facility outside of Leon County. So I'm going to have to dig through the news and find this chomo. See what's going on with him. Now we're going to head over to Georgia, where we've got a 44-year-old who has been arrested and charged with child molestation as well as other charges. Looks like somebody decked him in the eye, too. According to the Jenkins County Sheriff's Office in mid-March, their office became alerted that an adult male, who was later identified as Wayne James Palmer, had uh, reached out to what he thought was a 15-year-old girl. Yeah, we know better than that, don't we? It was actually a Jenkins County Sheriff's Office deputy operating under the online persona via an undercover social media page. Authorities say the undercover deputy began a conversation with Palmer. And according to investigators, the uh, male contacted that persona again on Thursday, March 14th. And this time, authorities say Palmer was requesting that the conversations be moved over to a text-based application. Probably Telegram or Kick. Who knows, right? Authorities say that once the male confirmed that it was indeed that 15-year-old persona, Palmer began sexually inappropriate conversations with the undercover, and after several conversations, of course, he asked to request a meeting. How nice. Once the subject was identified at the designated location, Palmer was arrested without incident and transported to the Jenkins County Jail. The Jenkins County Sheriff's Office states that since his arrest, Palmer has been charged with child molestation, 
enticing a child for indecent purposes, and electronically furnishing obscene materials to minors. This is Raul Luis Lopez, a 30-year-old uh, from Lubbock. He claimed he was hacked after authorities found child sexual abuse content on his computer. And he was sentenced to ten and a half years in prison. Not long enough, but I mean it's a start. Lopez was arrested by the Texas Department of Public Safety in September, and his arrest came after a cyber tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The Lubbock Police Department got a warrant to search Lopez's account for his cloud storage and found dozens of videos that showed the child sexual abuse. One video was at least 25 minutes long, and when confronted, Lopez told police his computer was hacked and the files of child sexual abuse material had just flooded into his online storage account. Some files showed children as young as three years old. Before authorities searched his phone, Lopez switched his phone with another one that he knew would not contain anything incriminating. And when authorities found his actual phone, they found even more files. Lopez pleaded guilty to transportation of child sexual abuse material and he will be on supervised release for five years after his prison time and of course will be required to register as a sex offender for life. See ya chomo! A Jefferson City man and his wife learned their sentences after pleading guilty to the production of child sexual abuse materials. U.S. District Judge Brian C. Wimes sentenced Paul Emerson Schofield, a 35-year-old, and his 31-year-old Chomet wife, Sarah Ellen Schofield. Judge Wimes sentenced Paul Schofield, or Schofield, whatever it is, doesn't matter, they're in prison now. He sentenced him to 40 years in federal prison with no parole. And then he sentenced her to 35 years in federal prison with no parole. The, uh, I'm going to call them showfields, pleaded guilty November of 20, uh, 23 to one count of conspiracy to produce child sexual abuse material and one count of producing that child sexual abuse material. They've been in federal custody without bond since their arrest back in 2022. And when he was arrested, Paul Schofield was a corrections officer at the Jefferson City Correctional Center. Yeah, they know better. Now to Arizona, where we've got a man from Clay Springs who's been sentenced in the uh, Navajo County Superior Court to 17 years in prison for sexual crimes against a 14-month-old relative. Yeah, you heard that right. On August 2, 2023, agents with the Homeland Security Investigation notified the Navajo County Sheriff's Office they discovered Joshua Cruz Eberhardt, a 25-year-old of Clay Springs, was distributing child sexual abuse materials online. His own victim. The two agencies immediately began cooperating on an investigation and Eberhardt was arrested August 3rd. He confessed that he had produced and distributed the sexually explicit video which depicted himself and a male relative who was a toddler at the time. Eberhardt remains in custody at the Navajo County Jail while the matter was further investigated and he pleaded guilty in January, and he was just sentenced to one count of sexually, uh, oh man, just one count? These crimes make me sick. A Germantown man is expected to serve 18 years in prison for distributing child sexual abuse materials. On Friday, Montgomery County Circuit Court Judge Bibby Berry sentenced Humad Sidiquai, a 35-year-old, to 64 years in prison with 46 years suspended. I don't get the suspended part. I mean, were they hoping he's going to mess up? Um, after that, he's got five years of supervised probation. Sidiquai pleaded guilty on December 20th to eight counts of distribution of child sexual abuse materials. Google provided Sidiquai's name, date of birth, email address, and phone number 
and said that his internet provider address was located in Germantown. The report was forwarded to the Montgomery County Police for an investigation, according to those charging documents. Then on June 30th of 22, the police department obtained a search warrant for his residence, and police seized multiple devices, including a computer, a hard drive, an iPhone. Uh, and when police were conducting the search, Sidiquai admitted to sending that child sexual abuse material to other persons, as well as the possession of it as well. Also, after searching his iPhone, investigators found that he sent 24 videos containing that image material to other people using the message service Telegram. He was arrested following the investigation and has been held without bond since then in the Montgomery County, excuse me, the Montgomery County Correctional Facility in Boyd's um, since October 12th of 23. Don't you hate it when you find these chomos are from your own state? It kind of sucks, man. Hey, it happens everywhere though, right? So, uh, this one here is from Michigan. He was sentenced in February to four years of probation for sexual battery of a child. Now he got arrested again last week and accused of violating his probation by visiting a child daycare facility. Oh my goodness. What are you doing, chomo? Charles Allen Camper. 66-year-old of Swartz Creek, Michigan, was sentenced on February 1st in Hawkins County Criminal Court to 150 days in jail, followed by four years on probation. Should have been 150 years in jail. And oh, he's got $1,044 in fees too. He was also ordered to be placed on the convicted sex offender list and to wear a GPS monitor while he was on that probation. Camper completed his jail sentence on March 6th and was released on that probation. And then his probation violation warrant alleges that on March 8th, just two days later, Camper's GPS monitor tracked him to a school in Virginia within a thousand feet of a daycare center in Kingsport and then to within a thousand feet of a daycare center and a public park in Rogersville. On March 20th, Camper allegedly visited a daycare center in Bristol, Virginia, and on March 21st, he allegedly visited a residence that was banned from visiting due to it being within a thousand feet of another daycare center. Camper is also accused of failing to properly charge his GPS monitor. Well, I wonder why he didn't want it charged, right? Well, he was arrested on the probation violation warrant on April 4th, and an April 30th probation violation hearing is scheduled in criminal court for this chomo. Let's throw the book at this guy, man. He's up to freaking no good. See ya, chomo. Hopefully never. Alright, well, if you're in the Houston, Texas area, be on the lookout for this guy. The uh, Houston authorities are on the uh, lookout for this guy charged with the sexual assault of a child under 14. The Houston Police Department's Special Victims Division and Crime Stoppers are appealing to the public to help locate 42-year-old Jose Artistes Giron Martinez, accused of three counts of aggravated sexual assault on a child. According to the report from August 10th of last year, the incident took place at an address on South Brazewood Boulevard in Houston. Investigators were prompted by the victim's outcry, which led to the discovery that the child had been sexually assaulted by Giron Martinez as stated in a Crime Stoppers press release. The fugitive is described as a Hispanic male, approximately 5 foot 7 inches tall, with brown eyes and black hair. Crime Stoppers has announced they may offer a reward of up to $5,000 for any information that leads to Garan Martinez's arrest and or charging. Let's get this sucker off the streets. And then we can say, see ya chomo. Happy birthday! Remember, this is our special secret. One in five children is sexually abused before they turn 18. Make a wish, but remember, it's a secret. Do you know the signs? I just want everyone to go home. Learn more about the risks of child sexual abuse at sapria.org.